You got it? Yep. Got it. Good. Come all the way past. Big spell first. Three, two, one. Presto. Nice and slow. Nice and steady. Up. Oh, good. Three, two, one. This is going to go a little quicker. One breath. Whoa. One breath. Up. See the burps. Now it looks good. Let's see and get the rest. Nice and slow here. Okay, let's go back. At this point, we put the crucible back in the furnace. That's so that everything, it just lets it cool down. If, you, if you're like pouring bronze directly after, you don't have to do that. You, it, like it'll cool down fine on its own. People say it lasts longer. I just do it so that I don't leave it out in the rain. Uh, <clears throat> you want to let everything cool down before you clean it up. The molds, 45 minutes before you open them, let them solidify. Uh, that's what we're going to go do now. <laughs> Like nothing, uh, but uh, we'll come back probably, what time is it, 2.15? Nice, right on time. Come back right about three, open them up, see what we got, uh, and that's it. Uh, this little mold that's here is called an ingot. Uh, that's what we put the excess metal in, like I was saying. Uh, a lot of oversplash on that one, but we can pick all that up and remelt it. If you're melting multiple pots, you can actually pick that stuff up and drop it right back in the furnace, and it melts much quicker because it's already 700 degrees. Uh, make sure you're using tongs to pick up hot metal, not gloves. Uh, really, you should use tongs to charge with. Um, you should. <laughs> uh, when, when you're charging, you don't want to drop pieces like straight down into the bottom of the bucket, especially solid things, because you don't want them to splash. You don't want them to hit the bottom. Little light pieces you can just sort of like push in, which is what we were doing today. But if you're melting like all virgin ingot metal, tongs to put them in. Yeah. What's the wet newspaper? The wet newspaper you put in between the crucible and the pedestal that it stands on every time. The furnace gets hot enough that everything gets soft in there. And if you don't put that newspaper in there, uh, the crucible and the bottom of the furnace can stick together. They can like get tacky, gooey, like liquid glass and bond together. What the newspaper does is it sits in between the two where no oxygen can get to it. So it burns and turns just to straight charcoal and creates like a little release so it always pops free. Um, Really important to do it in between melts. I do it every time just out of force of habit so that I don't forget. It doesn't really matter right now because everything's solid at this point and it's going to cool down and be fine. But you have to do it in between melts and you want to do it before you start melting. So when you first put the crucible in, you just put dry newspaper and that's what I use to start the fire. Um, the reason you make it wet is because so, the furnace was probably five, 600 degrees when we put the crucible back in there. And if you just throw dry newspaper in, it's just going to burst into flames. Oh. How much aluminum was in the crucible just to get started? Uh, that's about, that was probably 18, 19 pounds. And to get started, it was you just fill it with chunks of metal? You just fill it with chunks of metal. You want to fill it as much as you can without putting any stress on it, okay? And same thing goes with bronze, right? So, like, there's all these, like, when we cut them up, there's, like, little tiny sprues and stuff like that. Like, I just keep feeding them in, you know? Like, I start with two big ingots that fit in there. These ones from the trays. They fit in there, and then I just fill stuff in around it. Um, and then you just, it's like just basically a practice of keeping it full as it goes. But you don't ever want to pack anything into the crucible because if it's under stress and then it heats up and expands, it could crack the crucible. Yeah. How long does a little plug last in the bottom? That's a fire brick. That'll be here after you and I are okay. both dead. Um, yeah, the. Uh, what? Cool. Oh. What? 
that noise goes Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I, I picked that up. Um, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <coughs> with aluminum, the, the other things to keep in mind when you're doing this, you never wear any uh, synthetic clothing. So no, like, Under Armour or, like, Polar Fleece or any of that other stuff. Only cotton, wool, leather, natural fibers. Um, the reason for this is when those fibers catch on fire, they burn and turn to ash and will blow away. The synthetics will turn to liquid plastic and stick to your skin, which can make a bad situation much, much worse. Um, the same thing with the, one of the differences between aluminum and bronze is because it's so lightweight, you want to be care really careful about aluminum with it splashing. When iron, iron, if it, iron or bronze, because it's so dense, when it hits your body or the leathers, it'll bead and roll off because it's heavy. The aluminum's so lightweight, it hits, and you can see some of the splashes that went. Yeah. It makes almost like a splash instead of a drip. It'll spread out and adhere to the leather and can burn you through the leather. So you, with aluminum specifically, you need to be mindful of splashes that are coming to your clothing. I think that's all, and that's, that's most of the safety stuff. Better to pour on sand than on the gravel because like, this stuff here is going to pick up uh, the gravel. Yeah. And you have to, you don't have to, but it's a really good idea, especially with the aluminum, to like, either with a wire brush or hammer, pick that out of there, right? Because it's going to, uh, it won't melt and it'll just put extra slag in on top. And some of the stone is actually denser than the aluminum and it'll stay solid at the bottom, which you could accidentally pour into a casting and that ruins the whole afternoon. Yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> well, yeah. So. Oh.